everyone, welcome back. It is your tres amigos, the tres caballeros, and we are here with a very special edition, a one that by my count, and I'm no math major, about two years in the making, because the triple option X's and Knowles boys presented by Knowles 24-7, don't try to say that all at once, <laughs> is here to talk about Destin Hill, Fat, pays on a lot of name changes, a guy who signed in the 2021 class. Pick any two of those combinations. That's probably the name that's in the FSU student directory. But my God, recruiting is nuts enough. If you're on Knowles 24-7, subscribe. You should be. You know that. But boys, this one is like Mount Rushmore, one of the top four most ridiculous recruitments of all time. But it looks like it's coming to an end with the kid on campus because the aforementioned we'll call him Dustin pays on. Cause that's the name that's in the FSU student directory is going to be a no guys remind people who forgot about the class of 2021, why they should be excited. And while, while we were all excited when this kid signed with FSU. Yeah, he was a, he was a player that was coveted by everybody in the Southeast, Alabama, um, LSU, Florida state, obviously, there were, I mean, they hit the who's who were on the list. And then it kind of got weird towards the end that everybody was kind of, he wasn't a take anywhere, but he was a take at Florida State. And then obviously the saga has lived on for two years. And then we've been on uh, Dustin Watch every offseason. Um, here we are, what Zach broke the news uh, Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning that he was officially in the, uh, he was officially in the student directory. Zach, Zach was in there stalking the student directory, doing it, doing the great job that he does. Mm. Was able to break that news, and oh, here we are. And it's crazy because I went back and looked at, like, tried to find some of our old stuff, and we had like a little live stream two years ago to talk about him, and not a whole <laughs> lot more because it was like I feel like we kind of knew this was coming. Manifest destiny, boys, because the dream is completed. The Knowles have made it across. And it looks like it's going to be fulfilled. Of course, he is a wide receiver slash elite athlete out of Edna Carr University out of Dubut, Louisiana. I believe Adam, the kid was like high four star, almost like quasi yeah. five star, right? Like this was yeah. this was the crown jewel of that recruiting class. Kevin, what did you think about this kid's game? I mean, listen, we're the offensive guys. Push that big that big brood out of here. I'll go this way. Yeah. He doesn't. He just likes trench play. But Kevin, you and I are the two uh, sophisticated <laughs> offensive boys. What did you yes. like about this kid? So this he's he's kind of got this like mythical kind he of is. He's aura liar. about him now because people have been talking about him not existing for two years. Um, <laughs> but no, he's he's a speedster. He's someone that that stretches the field horizontal or uh, vertically, which is someone we desperately needed two years ago when he was committed, and it was really, um, I, I think it was super detrimental to that team to not not be able to play him i think that was an opportunity for him to come in and make an impact early but you'll see in this film here he he's a game breaker type he's he's gonna uh make one or two cuts get up field um Ooh. and he's just he's just a, a playmaker with the ball in his hands um so uh, wh when was this film uploaded is this his senior year film ab this is yeah this is highlights from his senior year it was actually uploaded a year ago which is odd um what isn't nice catch nice yak oh yeah. really nice yak <laughs> he's a full package as a wide receiver now he's two years removed from football from from high school we don't know whether he's been playing football in this time i'm guessing not but um who the hell knows he he's got he's got vertical speed he's got start stop he's very look at those feet i mean very They're quick very feet able to get in and out of that cut there on, on the stop and go you see the ability to pull away from the defender. Great ball skills. I mean, he he's got the full package. He's I think he's like six one ish. Um, Oof! Good catch. Good high point, high point right there. Football. Um, yeah, and we'll talk about our expectations for Destin here later. Cause to our knowledge, I don't think he's been playing much football unless he like secretly enrolled in the XFL under one of his 12 <laughs> aliases. I think he's going to be a little rusty. So we'll talk about the expectations, but man, you can see in this clip, it, Nice variety of routes. I think the routes look pretty smooth for a high school yep. kid. The footwork's nice. High points the ball. 
Um, this is a kid we were drooling over two years ago, but it'll be interesting to add him to a receiver core where he could actually kind of marinate and get seasoned a little bit more. The pressure's not even close to what it was uh, a couple years ago. With yeah, look at him here, be able to Oof. able to stop under control and then ex instantly accelerates back to full speed. Like that's. Yeah, I mean, to me, he reminds me a lot of kind of the film we were able to watch of Winston Wright when he was at West Virginia. Um, he's just just a true all round receiver, someone that's going to be able to go in the middle of the field. Oh. His routes are just super clean, very quick feet. Um, he's not playing schlubs either. Like the, they play pretty good competition. He's all football. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't speak, I, I just think that the the biggest thing is the the vertical speed. Like he's got elite vertical speed. It's not well. I should say good elites. Elites are worth throwing around a little too heavily these days. But yeah, I wonder what it, he would clock in at a at a true forty time. I want to say he was clocked in high school in like the in the four fours. Okay, well, yeah, that, I think you could call four four borderline elite there. Um, you know what I like about his game, guys? It's not just obviously when you see a lot of these high school tapes, the kids that are way more physically developed or like physically talented, a lot of times are running by people. He's doing a lot of that as well. Yeah. But there's there's good understanding of the position. He looks like a very smooth, natural wide receiver. Like it's – I wish he would have been on campus a couple of years ago. But It would have been nice. It would be helpful. You, you know, we, we haven't oh. seen him block at all. That's one of those <laughs> aspects that – is important for this for for this uh this this football team and this coaching staff. They're they're going to develop him as a blocker and expect that of him. Um, you just yeah, you just see how fluid he is in all of his movements. That's that's the biggest thing that he's jumped out at me. He's a tough runner too. I mean, obviously yeah. the blocking is going to be the big one of the bigger adjustments for him at this next level, especially with two years of no physicality. But but he's a tough runner. I don't know really. Yeah. No, he's taller than Micah Pittman, but like he kind of looks like Micah Pittman running around out there, but faster. Like, yeah, he's, he, he's fit, got another like, gear. Looks muscular, just physical. Oh, it's kind of weird. Maybe there's maybe there's a little uh, Jakai Douglas in there. Um, although he's taller than Jakai, yeah, he's, he's so much. He's so much. He's taller than those guys. Bigger. Like that's that's the odd part. Just I, he yeah. kind of reminds like the muscled up look. He kind of looks like Keon Coleman the way he moves a little yeah. bit, like it, mm -hmm. like as far as like the the fluidness of the routes. Obviously, not. I don't think he's got the size of Keon or anything like that. Um, I just he looks like a polished wide receiver as a senior. What's interesting is you're seeing very little route um, diversity. Diversity mm -hmm. here. You know, you're yeah. getting a lot of verticals, a lot of hitches, and a lot of slants, and that that might just be their offense. I don't think that's. I mean, there's a post. So, um, yeah, I I, I think in in an ideal world in Norvell's offense, he occupies that deep post player that AB has been, you know, wanting about not having uh, necessarily mm. so pokey, new pokey, pokey 2.0. To me, he's, he's just, he's a pokey. He's a, he's a pokey with a higher ceiling as, as an athlete. It's a pokey or pokey. I like, so it. he's listed at six foot, 200 pounds in, in his uh, senior year, senior year on Knowles 24 seven. That's pretty wow. sharp. So six foot, two hundred pounds to be able to move like this, like that's pretty, it's pretty, pretty skilled, pretty talented. Yeah, he's he's not the big bodied guy. He's not the Johnny Wilson or the or the Keon Coleman in that sense. But he is, he's more right. of a utility guy. You know, like a guy a, that can go anywhere. Like a gassed up Micah Pittman or like Winston yeah, Wright, yeah. like you said, Adam. Yeah, I, that's interesting. Um, Kevin, before we get to kind of our expectations of him for this upcoming year when he's in the student directory guys i feel good about making the video i can't i can't believe we're even talking about this kid um <laughs> where do you think he fits best in norville's offense he played pretty much all outside in high school do we think of him more as like a slot guy is he a candidate to really move around in mike norville's offense kevin where do you ideally see him at the next level yeah, I mean, I think Norvell naturally moves people around a lot. You know, mm. I, I think he he would be seen as the same position as Pokey. I think he's a guy that you do put in motion. You're not afraid to give him the occasional jet sweep. Um, but a lot of times you're putting him in motion just so he can kind of get a head start and beat someone downfield and, and kind of be your vertical speed threat. I mean, mm -hmm. Norvell's a, a vertical guy. So all of his receivers are going to be asked to be running vertical a lot. And so... Um, I think you've got to covet that speed. And to me, that's where, you know, a Ja'Kai Douglas is a comparison because 
Ja'Kai Douglas is one of the few people that I've had just outright track speed on FSU's roster, and you saw when he was healthy two years ago, he was winning constantly down the sidelines, and uh, I think that's what they're hoping to get out of out of Paison or um, Hill. Yeah. Whichever works. Um, <laughs> Adam, let's talk about it, because I agree with you largely, Kev. An athlete like that, a lot of, lot of ways to be dangerous in Mike Norvell's offense, especially with the pieces that surround him now as compared to two years ago. Adam, let's just say, for argument's sake, that this kid has not been training in the hyperbolic time chamber, crunching down on Sinzu beans, and he's 800 times stronger than he was before. Pardon the nerd <laughs> references. Let's say he's a high school kid that hasn't played football for two years, and he's coming up to Florida State, a team with championship aspirations. This kid's recruitment is different. The expectations from the fan base are probably going to be different. Talk to me, realistic big man. What are your expectations out of Destin Hill Pizon if he's if he's playing for FSU next year? Yeah, I think it's tough to expect anything, really. I mean, yeah. has he been has he been in any kind of training weight training? I mean, what kind of shape is his body in? I, I think you'd be a fool to sit here and say, oh, yeah, he's going to play this year. I've heard, like, punt, can he return punts? Like, there's film of his where he's a punt returner, yeah, and, and a pretty good one. But, man, I mean, I don't think he's played football at all over the last couple of years. I doubt he's done a whole lot of, uh, like, serious weight training, um, like, organized. Mm -hmm. um, probably hasn't done a lot of organized speed training. So I, I think it I think it would be a fool's errand to sit here and think that A, he was going to come out and be your punt returner, or B, just really give you any snaps at all. Um I mean, just you know, they're they're in the recruitment for Keon Coleman. You've got Johnny Wilson, you got Kentron, you, you uh you know, you brought in Hakeem Williams, you Vandravius Jacobs showed himself to be a player. Um Darian spring. Williamson, if he's healthy, Darian Williamson, if he's Kentron, healthy. all the yeah. like, he's, he's he's coming into a situation where I think that rational college football fans rarely expect anything out yeah. of freshman wide receivers anyway. That goes double for Destin, in my opinion. Right. The fact that he's been on campus longer isn't a positive in that aspect. Yeah, he's more mature. We don't know what the hell kind of shape he's going to come in, but guys, those those expectations that you naturally have for true freshman wide receivers lower them even more in mm -hmm. this case. Yeah. Now I do think and Kevin, you can speak to this as far as expectations, just because mine are pretty much non-existent for him this season. That is an exciting athlete with the base that once you knock that rust off, yeah. this could be a sneakily very important transition for a Florida state offense in 2024 where there's a lot of question marks and a lot of guys leaving. Yeah, well, I think you have um, you have a couple of freshman wide receivers that he's going to be able to develop with and grow mm -hmm. alongside. Um, you know, and so I think with you know Vendravius and and with Hakeem, these are two guys that are a little bit more known quantities. You know what you have in them, and now you have another X factor, a guy that potentially you know could even take a little bit more time. Um, but also another thing that's going to be interesting to watch is he's going to be more physically developed than a yeah. true freshman could mm -hmm. be. So while it will take him some time to get used to the flow of the game and get back in the shape of football. I mean, there's a, there's just a difference in body between a 20 year old and an 18 year old. And yeah. um, so, him as a sophomore or junior, assuming he gets his full four years of eligibility, is going to be a different. He's going to, you know, give you something that maybe those other two guys won't be able to because he's literally two years ahead in physical development. Yep. Um, so that that'll be interesting to watch because uh, I, I think that I think you're right. He, I think this year he's going to be able to sit back and watch other people play and kind of develop. But even next year or the year after. There, there might not be that pressure to have to be the guy yet, um, even though I think we see in that film that he has the capability. Uh, the, phys the, the physical composition maturity is, I think, a great point. One thing that I'm going to be looking for through Knowles 24-7's detailed and best in the business practice reports, I'm going to look at it like the emotional 
in mental maturity of a 20 year old versus an 18 year old, particularly a 20 year old who knows that the time on his football clock is ticking. This kid mm-hmm. lost two years of prime developmental football. I would like to see how he responds to that. Is there desperation or panic, or is that a wonderfully exquisite motivator? That's what I'm going to be looking for in addition. And it might, even though he's further behind the eight ball than a true freshman wide receiver coming in right out of high school football, maybe those mental and physical aspects actually lead him to develop quicker because he knows I need to get down to it. So I think it's an interesting case. I cannot believe that we're still talking about this kid in 2023. (laughs) I wrote him off two years ago because I'm a pessimistic bag of crap for all you people that held on for every destined watch, like all of it, you were proved right. I was proved wrong for the 9 millionth time in my life. I love breaking down this kid's film. Guys, stick with us on Knowles 24-7. I think we're going to have a busy couple of days here. We still got the transfer portal. Is not done, is it ever? Subscribe to Knowles 24-7. Subscribe to X's and Knowles YouTube. Subscribe to Knowles 24-7 YouTube. Put the notifications on. Guys, Destin Watch has ended. The threads can die. Chris Knee can sleep in peace. And so can you. We love you. Keep chopping.